Hey, and welcome back to the uh, Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. Today we have Herbie Goes Bananas. And, uh, yeah, this is the 1980 installment of the uh, popular Herbie's, Herbie the Love Bug-based uh, series uh, about a sentient car uh, that uh, wins races, uh, even though he's a VW bug and doesn't look like a race car at all. Uh, but he has amazing powers, and uh, he creates friendship wherever he goes. So, uh, <laughs> basically this this episode is, uh, this episode, I shouldn't call it an episode, this installment, I guess, because it's a, it's a full one and a half hour film. It's, uh, what is this, uh, an hour and 40 minutes or so? Yeah, hour and 33 it says on there. IMDb says something different, but oh well. Um... <laughs> This uh, movie is, it's so silly, it's so goofy, and yes, it's about a race car that honestly does not race at any point in the entire movie. It, the intention is to eventually race it. Um, it's kind of the premise of the guys who somehow inherit it. Uh, they, it, it's he ends up in, he's in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. These guys sort of are sent there to pick him up. I, f I forget, honestly, why it's theirs now. I guess it, from movie to movie, he gets inherited by different people. Um, and then uh, everything just it spins out of control from there. They get pickpocketed by like a little 10-year-old kid who honestly looks seven. But uh, And the whole movie hinges upon this kid. He pickpockets our two main characters, the two just two guy, American guys who decide to race Herbie. Um, and they also, the kid also pickpockets some guys who are going to rob a uh, Incan burial ground or Incan temple to get all the gold. They have some photos and some negatives to show that this thing exists. And well, when the kid pick, pickpockets them, he kind of takes the pictures and they need to get them back. So there's a lot of child abuse in this thing. <laughs> It's uh, they they kind of knock this kid around, but he gets the best of pretty much everybody, uh, especially once he starts befriending Herbie. Um, they end up somehow on a cruise ship uh, because they need to go from Mexico to Brazil. Before they even make it to Panama, Herbie causes enough trouble just by being alive that it the child ends up in a cage. Herbie gets scolded at some point and put also in the lower hold until he helps the kid break out. And I'm not going to ruin it all for you because I know if you haven't watched it already, as I told you yesterday, you're going to watch it now based on this recommendation alone, obviously. It, it's honestly, it's good, wholesome fun. It is just, just good, wacky. You're going to go, what am I watching? How weird is this you're gonna you're gonna get that you're gonna have that feeling a lot uh watching this uh but the cool thing about this movie is the cast so you get harvey corman harvey corman if you're young you have no idea who that is but harvey corman is in this he plays a uh the captain of the of the cruise ship who's a little bit full of himself uh and a little bit he he's a little bit manic which is good harvey corman material. He's chewing the scenery. Everybody in this is chewing the scenery like crazy. Uh, Cloris Leachman is the uh, older, I don't know, she's not whole. I mean, the woman's now in her early mid-90s and she's still rocking it. She's still amazing. I love Cloris Leachman. But uh, in this she's maybe 50 because this is 1980 or so. She's 50 years old. And uh, she's got a crush on the captain. She brought her niece with her, who's this mousy, school buttoned up, big glasses, uh, super educated girl who one of the guys falls in love with really quickly for some reason. I think they're also meant to scam the women. Uh, it's it's really convoluted. It's like six movies going at the same time, but none of them with any real depth to the storylines. So yeah, it's. You gotta pay attention, but uh, yeah, you're never gonna get really too lost or care for the motivations of most of these characters. It's really just to see everybody just 
get all flustered and at the, at the antics of Herbie and uh, chase it down. It's, it's a big chase against time to save the kid, find Herbie. Honestly, at one point, the captain gets so ticked off at Herbie that he basically has him walk the plank, in a sense. They turn the car upside down on a plank and then tip him into the ocean. Yeah. Which then leads Herbie to cross the Panama Canal. And uh, and after that, he is somehow do doing, does some bullfighting at some point. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. And if you're wondering where the name Herbie Goes Bananas comes from, it only is relevant to the last 15 minutes of the movie. So if you want to skip, skip to the last 15 minutes of the movie, you can understand why it's called Herbie Goes Bananas, because there are no bananas in this movie. And they're actually relevant to the plot only in the final, final scene. So. Uh, oh, also, characters that I enjoyed. Uh, the bad guy, one of the, the, the bad, main bad guys, John Vernon, which is a name that most people do not know, um, unless you're a big movie nut, but he is a well-known character actor who's just done a zillion movies and TV shows over the years, and he's he's got a very distinct voice. Um, he's He's got... He's just got that... He's always plays an authority figure or a bad guy for the most part. Uh, you never, he's square jawed and, and tough, you know. So you kind of, if you once you see the man once, you'll recognize him in just about everything else. The weird ironic thing for you Marvel fans out there is that this is one of the few actors who has played many Marvel characters over the years. He's played General Ross in the uh, Incredible Hulk TV series from the 70s with Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno. Uh, so, yeah, General Ross. Uh, but beyond that, he's also, as early as 1966, played Iron Man. Yes, Tony Stark is one of the first, li probably might even be the first live-action Tony Stark. Come back here. Might be the first, well, not live-action, sorry. It's the voice, he, it was an animated series. He was the, probably might have been the first Iron Man. I don't know. I, I don't know if, there's a, if there was an Iron Man uh, a cartoon or anything earlier than 1966, but yeah, he's he was Iron Man once. He played Doctor Doom in the Fantastic Four cartoon. I can't remember what year that was. He he also played Doctor Strange. Uh, he's all been a huge chunk of the unofficial non MCU uh, Marvel characters. He because again he's got a great voice. Uh, he's got that authoritative tone that, you know, you can see would make a great uh, Tony or or Doctor Strange or Doctor Doom. So, yeah, John Vernon's great. Also, Alex uh, Rocco uh, is also one of the bad guys. He uh, he also has a distinctive voice, plays a, usually a good slimy bad guy. He played... Uh, oh, it's slipping my mind now. It's, uh, he played the, uh, the son of the guy who created Itchy and Scratchy. And it, it, if you know it, say it out loud. Comment below. And I can't say the name right off, off the top of my head right now. But, uh, he is, he's, uh, he's done that. And he's, he's been all over, too. So anyway, Herbie Go Goes Bananas is actually a fun, uh, wholesome thing. You, honestly, if you have kids, little, little kids, uh, probably get a kick out of it because it's a nice little bonding movie between a boy and the car he found and yeah it's it's cute but yeah don't expect any kind of weird coherent uh, any any kind of realistic coherency to this thing and don't expect a race uh the this sh the movie well i'm not gonna give away the ending but pretty much the, the ending involves them preparing to go on a race, and for some reason, the car is inside one of the cabins on the cruise ship. How it got in there, I have no idea. Why the engine? they started the engine inside there, I have no idea. Because they're all going to suffocate or get carbon monoxide poisoning. Yeah, I don't know how that works. And by the way, the cabins have to be pretty freaking huge on that cruise ship to fit a, even a VW bug. I don't know if you've been on a cruise ship before, but I don't think the rooms are really that big. So, anyway... Lots of illogical storytelling in this, uh, but again, it's a goofy car that's a live story.
you know. Um, but it's a great cast. It's good fun. Cloris, Cloris Leachman, Harvey Corbin, John Vernon, Alex Rocco. Uh, yeah, it's and, and many more. So uh, give it a shot if you like the Harvey movies. This is one of the weirder ones, but it's fun. So what we're going to do now is pick tomorrow's random show. Here we go. Or movie. Let's generate 705. High on the list, 705. Come on. 705. <laughs> there we go. 705. I think it's I think it's a short. Uh, it's yellow coated, so it's tin toy. Something tells me that might have to do with some early, might be some early Pixar. I could be completely wrong, but hey, this is this should be an easy one. If it's a short, it shouldn't take you more than a few seconds, a few minutes to watch it. And we'll see you back here tomorrow on the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge.